Hello there, hi, uh, my name's Dr. Sandu, I'm one of the junior doctors. Can I get your name? Tom Smith. Tom Smith, and what's your date of birth, Tom? The 1st of January, 1998. Okay, uh, I've been asked to examine your uh, the nerves around your head and neck. Okay. Um, I'll probably explain as I go through, but we're testing your vision, testing some of the muscles and sensation around your face awesome. and neck. Would that be okay? Yeah, it's fine. Great stuff. I'm just gonna go and wash my hands and I'll be back in a second. Perfect. Okay, Tom, so, so I'm just having a look at Tom. So there's no obvious uh, muscle wastage, facial asymmetry. Um, you're not in any pain at all, Tom, no at the pain, moment. No. Okay, can't see any obvious twitching of his um, muscles or anything, which is good. Okay, Tom, um, have you noticed any changes in your sense of smell at all? No. That's good, okay. Tom, I'd like to test your vision. I'm gonna use what we call a Snellen chart. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to use this Snellen chart here. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to keep your glasses on. And if you place your uh, left hand over your left eye, okay, and just read the lowest line that you can see on here. The Snellen chart should be six meters away from the patient. O-U-T-X-H-F. Okay, and can you just change, swap hands for me? So, and again, just read the lowest line you could see here. O-U-T-X-H-F. That's very good, thank you very much. Okay, all right, Tom, so what I'd like you to do is I'm gonna test your visual fields. So I'd like you to place your left hand over your left eye, so like this. I want you to keep your head nice and straight and just keep looking at me, okay? Mm -hmm. Try not to move your eyes, just keep looking at me. I'm gonna wriggle my fingers and I just want you to let me know when you can actually see them. Yeah, I can see them. Good? Yeah, I can see them. Good? Yeah, I can see them. Good, just stay as you are, Tom. Yeah, I can see those. Good, okay. Yeah, I can see those. Good. And I can see those. Good. Just change over for me. So I'd like you to cover this eye for me. Okay. And again, just keep looking at me. Okay. And let me know when you see my fingers. Yeah, I can see those. Good. I can see those. Good. And I can see those. Good. Okay. And just stay as you are again. So I'm going to just change my hand. Uh, keep looking at me and let me know when you see my fingers. Yeah, I can see those. And those. Good. And those. Good, okay, good. Right, Tom, what I'd like you to do is I want you to just look straight ahead for me. Okay. And then I'm gonna bring my finger in. So just look at my finger now, and then just follow my finger. Good, good. Any sort of double vision, any pain or anything there? No. Okay, I'm going to shine a light into you. So just, can you just take your glasses yeah, off. Yeah, that's fine, no problem. Have a little uh, closer look, okay. All right, Tom, okay. Let's keep looking ahead for me. Good, okay. Good. So the candidate is now shining a light into either eye, looking at the pupillary response via the direct light reflex. And by covering the eye, you shine the light in, for example, the left eye, and you look for a reaction in the right eye, and that's the consensual light reflex. And of course, you repeat it on the other side. Right, Tom, so again, just keep your head nice and in the middle for me. So we're gonna test the next three nerves together. Okay. Uh, can't see any obvious drooping of your eyelids, so that's good. Uh, so just keep your head nice and straight. And I want you to just follow my finger using just your eyes, okay? Good, okay, was there any sort of double vision there? No. No blurred vision. No. and no pain no good and i can't see any obvious nystagmus there so that's good perfect so you can see here that the candidate is now asking the patient to follow his finger using just his eyes remember the head should not move and here you are testing the third fourth and sixth cranial nerves the ocular motor trochlear and abducens nerves Okay, so we're going to move on to the fifth cranial nerve, okay, which is your trigeminal nerve. So, Tom, uh, I'm just going to uh, stroke you here on the neck. Can you feel that? Yep. Does that feel normal? Mm hmm Okay. So I'm going to st uh, stroke you either side of your face. Perfect. Uh, just let me know if it feels the same on each side. And if you can't feel it or if it feels abnormal, just let us know, okay? Does that feel the same as this? Yes. Good. Does this feel the same as this? Yes. Good. Does this feel the same as this? Yes. Good, okay. Tom, I'd like you to just grit your teeth together like this. Just do that again for me. Good, and again. Okay, and one more.
good. And just relax, good. I want you to just go like this for me. Good, that's fine. I wouldn't do the corneal reflex, but that's something that we can offer to do at a later stage. Okay, so moving on to the seventh nerve now. Uh, so what I'd like to do, Tom, is I'd like you to just raise your eyebrows like that and don't let me push them down. Good, okay. Close your eyes like this and don't let me open them. Good, and just go. Okay, and just do it again and don't let me burst that bubble. Good, and just go. Good, fantastic. So this is a close-up view now of the doctor demonstrating how to test the trigeminal nerve. You can see that he's stroking the face on either side of the fifth trigeminal nerve distribution. So you've got the ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular branches and is asking the patient each time if it feels the same on both sides. Jaw movements are being tested here and that's an example of the uh, pterygoid muscle. Raising up of the eyebrows, we're now into the seventh cranial nerve and raising of the eyebrows will test the frontalis muscle. Closing the eyes shut like this will test the orbicularis oculi. Blowing out your cheeks like this is an example of the buccinator muscles in action. And of course, smiling is an example of the orbicularis oris muscle. Going to move on to the eighth cranial nerve now. Um, and that's going to be, so what I want you to do, Tom, let me know if you can hear anything, okay? Yep, I can hear that. Good. And that too. Good, okay. Right, Tom, so this is a tuning fork, okay? Um, and I'm going to just let it vibrate. Now this is sound one. This is sound two. Yep. Which sound is louder? Number one. Good. Okay. This is sound one. Yep. And this is sound two. Which one is louder? Number one. Good. Okay. So here the doctor is demonstrating how to do the Renee's test. Sound one is air conduction and sound two is bone conduction where the tuning fork which is vibrating is placed on the mastoid process. The next thing I'm doing, I'm just going to place this into the middle of your forehead like this. Okay, can you tell me if that goes sound is the same on both sides or if it localizes to one side? Uh, just in the center. Good, okay. So you can now see that the doctor is going to demonstrate how to correctly perform the Weber's test. And you ask the patient which side that sensation localizes to. Next, the candidate is demonstrating how to test for cranial nerves 9 and 10, the glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves. You can ask the patient to cough and have a look at the soft palate by getting them to open their mouth. And normally candidates will also ask the patient to go, ah, and that way you can have a clear look at the soft palate. This one is slightly inflamed, but there's no obvious pathology. And you can mention that you would do the gag reflex. Then you've got the 11th cranial nerve, which is the accessory nerve. Now here you would ask the patient to shrug their shoulders and try and push their shoulders down. Turn the head to the side. So first, for example, go to the left and ask the patient to hold that position while you push against them. And then of course, look to the opposite side and repeat that motion. And finally, the last cranial nerve, which is the 12th cranial nerve is the hypoglossal nerve. So here you can see that the tongue has been protruded and you're looking for any obvious wastage, any fasciculations. And of course, you would ask the patient to demonstrate their tongue movements. Uh, for completion, we can also examine the neurological system of the upper limb and the neurological system of the lower limb.